Happy Father's Day, everyone. Um, I've got a great treat for you now. I'm going to have an interview um, through uh, Zoom with Alistair. Um, so here's Alistair. Alistair, do you want to tell everyone who you are, first of all? Just tell us a little bit about you. Okay, hi, yes. Yeah, so, so I'm Alistair. Uh, I'm 54 years of age uh, and I'm married to Pippa and we've got two sons, uh, Harry and Jack. Harry's 17, Jack's 14. Awesome. And, got, and I almost forgot. Don't forget two, the dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got two dogs now. We've got uh, Jasper, and we've now, uh, during lockdown, uh, had a puppy called Albie, who uh, at the moment is 13 weeks old. So that's our lockdown challenge. Oh, wow. So good. So, um, a little bit like myself, Al, you, your dad is no longer with us. And I'm aware that Father's Day for some people. Um, you know, it could be a, a sad time as well as a celebration. I just, yeah. I just wanted to, for me, it's really, I find it lovely to talk talk about my dad. And um, I just wanted you just to share maybe a fond memory of your own dad. Yeah. Um, what's your fondest memory of your dad? Yeah, okay. Yeah, like like you've just said, Ben, it's, it's keeping, uh, you know, dad, you know, in my memories. My dad passed away uh, in 2005. Um, so that's you know getting on for 15 years now. Um, Jack had just been born, um, so Jack was born in the in the August, and my dad passed away in the December. So, you know, one of the, one of the nicest memories is is um, that we were able to to share Jack with my dad before he passed away. He actually got to hold him, which was really special to us. Uh, yeah, growing up, he was you know he was such a fantastic role model. Role model. He um, he had you know he had a great moral compass. You know he taught me right from wrong. He uh, you know yeah absolutely definitely. He I'd like to think he's passed that on to me. Although although Pippa might say something different around that. Yeah, I was going to say, but ask Pippa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I like uh, you know Dad like to take over in the kitchen. Yeah, and, and I think I've definitely got that trait as well. It's, if, if I go in the kitchen and start cooking, yeah. leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think my fondest memory um, is you know my, my dad worked hard all year all, all year um, all year round, and every summer uh, we used to go up to Scotland for some holiday um, yeah. with the family, and, and all the family would come together, um, and we used, we used to drive up um, and. My dad would park his car in the drive, uh, and that would be the last he would he would use the car for the whole week we were away on holiday. We used to stay in a cottage in the south of, in southwest of Scotland, right in a little village, and it was and it was literally a cottage, a road, and then the beach. Uh, so we just used to like turf out of the cottage in the morning, go play on the beach all day long. But the memory I've got of my dad really is that he would go out early in the morning. Uh, for, for a walk on his own um, and we used to get up or I used to get up in the morning after he'd gone out and you'd go out on the beach and you couldn't see him anywhere on the beach but I would look around and I'd find his footsteps I'd find his his sandal prints in the in the sand he used to wear <laughs> he was a good old bloke he used to wear socks and sandals no matter what the weather was <laughs> but I would find his I would find the the, the impressions in the sand of his sandal yeah. And although I couldn't see where he was, I would just follow those footprints along the sand and eventually I'd catch up with him. You wow. know, maybe a mile, two miles down the sand and I'd catch up with him. And it was just, I just got that vivid memory of doing that with him. It was so, I don't know, I just felt so secure seeing those footprints in the sand yeah. and then just following them along until I, until I caught up with him. Yeah. He wasn't always that pleased to see me, but like, what are you doing here? But <laughs> it was yeah. so great. It was such a lovely time. And then we'd, you know, we'd wander back or whatever. So yeah, yeah, that's my dad. That was my dad. What a great memory. So you're now my dad, um, yeah. two boys and two dogs. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> what's sort of the highlight of being a dad so far for you? What, you know, some positive, give us some, some great dad experience or moments. I think like what I've just said to you about my dad is is uh, and, and I'm sure you do it with you know you, you do it with Abigail is you know my dad I, I don't want the boys to lose their memories of, of him so you know he's very much you know still in our lives we still talk about him 
Um, you know, we, I still chat to the boys about things that I did growing up with dad and, and things that, well, Jack obviously can't remember things particularly, but, you know, certainly with Harry, things that he remembers with him. But yeah, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm so proud of the, of the young men that the boys are growing into. Uh, you know, the, the, they both serve in church. Yeah. Uh, you know, Harry, Harry and Jack are both on the events team. They're both really involved in uh, Ignite and in, and in kids. Yeah. Um, and then obviously Jack's this master musician who <laughs> plays these guitars. I notice you're in his room. <laughs> He's yes, at the best yeah. place at the moment. <laughs> It's the quietest place I could find in the house, and, and uh, we've we've had a, a quick bit of tidying. We've done a bit of touch up on the wall behind. And, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. One of the challenges you've, you've asked around the boys is yeah, the eat us out of house and home. The, the, <laughs> the growing, the continuing growing, and it, it is like sharing a house with two locusts. We get Tesco delivered, and uh, and before we know it, it's 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 gone. It's oh, like what can we, what can we eat next? But I think the proudest moment I've got of, of, of Harry and Jack was, was when they both, uh, you know, they both gave their lives to Jesus, and yeah. you know, and they were both baptized. I think you were there when they were baptized, Ben. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was, it was yeah. wow. It was close on emotional. It was yeah. amazing. To see. Yeah. We'll get on in a, in a moment. We'll talk more about, um, uh, you know, what the difference Jesus and God has made in your family's life. Um, but. I just wanted to kind of talk about another sort of big section of your life. I'm, I'm, for anyone that's just watching, um, I'm inter interviewing Alistair and we're talking about being a father, being a dad. Um, and a big part of your life, Alistair, was um, being in the police not so long yeah. ago. Um, you know, what impact has being a police officer made to you as a man? So, yeah, I was, I was in the police. I did 30 years uh, in the police service. Wow. Um, I retired, I've been retired almost four years now, Ben. I retired in 2016, so. I don't know if this makes you feel any better or any worse, but the, the day, you sent me a photo, I think there's a photo on screen, um, when you joined the force. That was the year I was born. So just just to, to make you feel better. I, that, that, <laughs> that really does. But just to put it in context, so you started the force in 1986. When you right? were born, when you were born. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so anyway, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Carry on. So, what difference has it made in your life? You know, being an officer. It taught me a lot of things. Um, being in the police service, it taught me to be resilient. It taught me to have patience with people. It taught me to see the good in people. It was. It was. It. It. It, it was so easy in the police service to see the dark side of things we dealt with and the dark side. In the people we dealt with, but you know, we, we it taught me to see through that. It taught me to to see that you know, people are good. Uh, you know, people you know do have a heart. And it was it was yeah, it was absolutely trying not to bring that home as well. It, you know, how to manage stress. It was it you know it was a stressful job. There was a lot of stress involved. And it, it could have been easy to bring that home and share it, you know, with Pepper and the boys. And so, it, it, yeah, it taught me to, to leave that at work and leave it behind and, and yeah. bring it home with me. You mentioned um, in a conversation earlier about um, seeing the best in people and seeing yeah. the good. In, and I think that's, you know, significant as a Christian now. Yeah. In fact, actually, you know, what God does for us, yeah. he's, you know, he sees through all the mess. Yeah. and through the darkness and he sees yeah, the good absolutely. in it. I think that, you know, that's an amazing illustration of, of what God does in us, that you yeah. as an officer, you would see and you try and see the good in, in people. Yeah, so anyway, uh, what you're really good at, Alistair, um, <laughs> and those watching, um, I'm just going to kind of address you for a second. Alistair's really good at just sharing stories <laughs> about his, his life and um, just share us a little story um, about, you know, being Ten, a police. It tends to be like mishaps that I've been involved in, yeah. normally, Ben, I have to say. Yeah, just, um, yeah, uh, well, I was on duty one day and I had to go on a, on a routine visit to a house in Stoke-on-Trent and it was uh, one of these terraced houses where you had the, the front living room and then a, a corridor to go down to the back living room. Yeah. And it was just a routine visit and I, and I call and, I, and I'm chatting away to the occupant and they invite the occupant invites me in and invites me to go down to the to the back room. So I, I'm just nonchalantly walking down this corridor, chatting away. 
And literally the next thing is, I'm, I hear a bang and I'm lying on the floor with my back looking up at the ceiling and I knocked myself out. And the, the occupant came running over to me and I got this big red mark across my forehead and I'd walked into a chin-up bar that was halfway down the corridor. It was too high for the occupant, but it was at, right at my forehead height. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. So I had to go back into the police station and I got this lovely big red mark across my forehead. Of course, everyone's like, what on earth have you done now, Alistair? <laughs> so good. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about fatherhood and um, your childhood, but also about the police force. Um, when did you become a Christian? Can you give us a rough time scale? Yeah, um, we we first we first started coming to to, to breathe, and uh, I've, I've had to look this up, Ben, because it's, it's so long ago. I mean, it's it's, a, it's obviously a you know a, a significant time in my life. But yeah, we started coming to breathe in 2012, um, and uh, I became a Christian in 2013. So we, yeah. we we all we've all we've all taken Jesus into our lives, and we've, yeah. we've, we've all taken Jesus into our lives at, at different times. So. Yeah. I I was the first to uh, I was the first to go in 2013. I was baptised in May of 2013. Um, I think it was actually you that did it, Ben. Yes, yeah, I think it was yeah. You and possibly you and Rob, I think it was. Yeah, possibly it was. I remember yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so uh, yeah, so we, none of us grew up in a in a Christian household particularly. Um, I you know I didn't my. My parents did have faith, I think, but not when I was growing up. We didn't go to church. We didn't. I said my prayers when I went to bed when I was little, but um, that was my really only experience of Jesus. And it was only until, you know, coming to breathe that I really, you know, encountered Jesus and, and gave my life. Wow. So now that you've all found Jesus, what difference does Jesus make? in your family life, in you as a dad and the kids, what, what difference has Jesus made? In, if you can summarise it in a brief. Yeah. Um, that we're filled with hope and joy and excitement and love. You know, love for each other, love for Jesus, uh, you know, love for other people as well. It's, you know, it's, yeah, we were, I think before we found Jesus, I think, I think you hear, you know, we were going through the motions in life. Yeah. Um, but you know, now, you know, we're doing life with Jesus. It's just amazing. It's great. That's so good. Yeah. Wow. I mean, what a great story. It's always a pleasure. You, um, more, when, before lockdown and before COVID, we, you were regular in the church um, building on a Monday and it was great always at lunchtime to have a chat with you about yeah. you know, life and it, it, it's, it's, it's such an encouragement. But um, I'm aware that it, it's, it's Father's Day and as, as I said a bit at the beginning of this interview that for some people it may not be a particularly easy day. Um, you may have lost or, or, or may not. And there may be other reasons why you don't um, particularly find Father's Day um, enjoyable. And I just wanted Alistair to, to finish us off with just maybe just a few words of encouragement and um, inspiration for the men, particularly yeah. Father's Day. Could you just um, give us some encouragement? Yeah, like, like you say, Ben, you know, Father's Day, you know, can be a tough time for, for people. You know, it, it can be a really tough time for people who, you know, haven't had, you know, a great relationship with their, their own dad, their own father or you know even who the guy for, for people that you know don't know who their dad is but you know we all have a father in heaven who loves us no matter what he loves us all you know no matter what so yeah so what i would just say is you know just wherever you are you know wherever you're at at the moment just remember that you know our father in heaven he, he loves us unconditionally amazing well, I think that I can't say it any better myself, really. So, first of all, thanks very much, Alistair, for, um, for sharing with us today. And thanks to everyone. Great. Thanks to everyone that's listened, and we hope that you found it helpful. And again, happy Father's Day. Yeah. See you later.